<laughs> hey, what is going on, crypto people? So listen, listen, please help me. Oh, help me to understand what just happened tonight at the DNC. Help me to understand. I'm I'm trying to understand. You know, this is not a you know, this is not a politics politics channel, political channel. Help me on. You know how Kevin Hart, you know how Kevin Hart says, help me. Okay. That's what I'm talking about right now. Help me. <laughs> what? The... Oh my. Oh my goodness. 92 pages. 92 pages. And not a word or mention of blockchain, DLT, digital assets, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining. Nothing. Stable coins, CBDCs. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, my gosh. We're going to hear from the from the Donalds, I affectionately call him President Trump. And I'd say to you, I understand. He un I understand it's a game. I know. I understand he's playing the game. But at least he's smart enough to understand what's going on, to uh, acknowledge that something's going on. And we should pay attention to it. We should be at the forefront of it. At least he understands that. I can understand it's the game. And he's saying some stuff to appeal to some groups. I get it. But a 92-page document and nothing. Nothing. Did they not get the word? They must have missed the whole BlackRock thing. They didn't get the word about what's going on? That the current administration didn't get the word, apparently. And not only BlackRock, but now Goldman Sachs. Shout out to Jung Link for sharing this with the community. Goldman Sachs joins the Bitcoin trade. Goldman Sachs, family. Goldman Sachs has invested 418 million across multi 418 million across multiple ETFs, including BlackRock's fund, marking a significant step in institutional adoption. Inter interestingly, while Goldman is leaning in, Morgan Stanley is shifting from Grayscale to BlackRock, reflecting changing strategies in the crypto space. It, it, look, I, you know, the, I know the pure natives get it. We all get it as pure native digital asset holders. We we get it. There's a they can there there's an a there's a possibility of some type of co-op. We get it. But I'm talking about this current administration not even acknowledging that this new financial system is here and is here to stay. Not even acknowledging it. Take a listen to this right here real quick. Sagalas now joins us with new reporting on the Wall Street firm that's getting more and leaning into that Bitcoin trade. Mac, who is it? Goldman Sachs. Okay. <laughs> so this week we got a fresh take on what institutional adoption looks like with those U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs. And Goldman Sachs added uh, $418 million across seven different U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs, more than half of that 
uh, and BlackRock, uh, the IBIT fund. And what's interesting is that it was just in April that their wealth management unit CIO told the Wall Street Journal that there wasn't much client appetite for that product. Uh, clearly, that tune has changed. You've seen other banks jump in, HSBC, Bank of America. Morgan Stanley. Uh, Morgan Stanley. But what's interesting is that they actually paired, uh, paired their holdings in these spot Bitcoin products. They just pitch them more to their clients, apparently, right now. Yeah, right? So, yeah. as of the last week, there are 15,000 uh, FAs are now allowed to pitch it out to certain clients. Now, that's who's leaning in, getting yeah. more into it. At the same time, there's always a yang to the yin. Who's kind of backing out or kind of paring back? Well, I mean, talking about Morgan Stanley again, they had a $270 million position in Q1. They pared that down to $189 million switched out their grayscale shares for BlackRock. That's a, a common trend. But then you're also seeing uh, names in the hedge fund space, like Millennium Management, which remains the biggest single holder of BlackRock's uh, IBIT fund, but uh, they're down to $1.1 billion from $2 billion. Um, and that's also, you've got Elliott Management completely exiting their position. So there are people pairing back their stake, JP Morgan as well, though they had a pretty tepid share to start with. Uh, the trends now, fund flow wise, we, we know that there are, the bigger established, I shouldn't say the bigger players, not as established because nobody is really that established right now besides Grayscale. But the fund flow situation at Grayscale versus BlackRock versus Fidelity has been very, very different over the course of the last six to nine months. What exactly is happening here? So Grayscale came in with this uh, huge head start and they had BlackRock eclipse them in terms of uh, AUM in May with those spot Bitcoin ETFs. And remember, it was Grayscale that fought the SEC in court to pave the way for the approval of these products. And you just, you saw it. I, I mean, we already knew that we, across Grayscale's two spot Bitcoin ETFs, they had net outflows of more than $19 billion. But now we got objects in, in terms of who was turning over their books. You, Like I mentioned, Goldman Sachs. Are they just moving from Grayscale to Vanguard and, and, and BlackRock? Exactly. And that's... Exactly what they're doing. Exactly what they're doing. So my point to this is BlackRock, now Goldman, and the current administration doesn't, doesn't think that's significant, doesn't think that matters. Are they suggesting that the digital asset space, the digital asset holders don't matter? Ryan Sean Adams from um, Bankless shared this. I'm actually shocked. Crypto has never been more polit politically active. We've shown Democrats the votes. We've shown them the money. Educated them on policy. Yet the double down on anti-crypto, yet they double down on anti-crypto. The anti-crypto army with its tentacles in the administrative state is more powerful and determined than I thought. The 92-page Democratic Party platform document was released today outlining the uh, Kamala Harris agenda. Not a single mention of crypto. Not even a word. After years of hostility, no way to spin this. This feels like spit on the face. And to me, it's worse than it. Like, not an acknowledgement when the, the largest asset under management, again, assets AUM in BlackRock, which I believe is the fourth branch of the, of the current government, and this administration chooses to double down on being anti-crypto. I, 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 it's an alarming, alarming, and an alarming mistake in so many ways. But in any case, this is uh, Donald Trump here. We must stay at the forefront of crypto. If not, the enemy will take the lead. To power our country into the future, including the growing electricity demands of AI and cryptocurrencies, a topic that's becoming increasingly important. We must stay at the forefront. If we don't, the enemy and other countries will take the lead in both AI and crypto. That's alarming, the difference.
This is what the Republicans did for their thing. By comparison, says Eleanor Terry, here's the GOP's party platform that has a specific, a specific section dedicated to championing, quote unquote, innovation that includes crypto, AI, and space travel. In terms of crypto, Republicans will end the Democrats' unlawful and un-American crypto crackdown and oppose the creation of a central bank digital currency. We will defend the rights to mine Bitcoin and ensure every American has the right to self-custody of their digital assets and transact free from government surveillance and control. My only, my only explanation to this misstep by uh, the Dems is that they've done some numbers and they've 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 checked the amount of people that they've got here illegally, and they feel like they can um, close the gap, if not take the way with those uh, or take the lead with those votes. The interesting is going to be is are we going to let that happen? Are we going to let that happen? That's going to be an interesting thing. Again, it's not a political thing. But boy, oh boy, this is that's alarming that that happened. Absolutely alarming. Let me know what you guys think. How do you feel about it? Not a word, not a peep. Not even, not even, you know, shorten it up and just say DLT. Shorten it up and, you know, crypto. Just C-R-Y-P-T-O. Not a peep. Again, I ask all of you, are you willing to put your vote where your generational wealth lies? It's up to you. It's up to you and I to make that difference. All right, fam, there it is. Disruption for the XRP Ripple Daily News in around zero to 10 minutes. I hope that it has been of value to you. If it has, do me a favor, hit that like button. And if you've been hanging out, listening to the Crypto Seas and you've been enjoying those hangouts, please consider subscribing to the channel. we got about 45, 50% of the people who are hanging out, listening and have them subscribe. And we're trying to get that number down to 25%. You could do your part right now by just hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you know whenever we go live or whenever we upload a video. I'm going to end this one like I do all my videos and remind you guys of this. Oh, money doesn't want you to win. But that's okay, though. Because you and I, we're already winning. And I would ask you to consider this or perhaps ponder the idea or notion of living your life permissionless. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Bye.